Luckily, the aircraft were in place and they were able to hold it on the ridge line and hold it in check until we could get ground troops into the area. A close call in Lakeside. A brush fire forces people to get out quick. The piece of equipment that sparked the fire. A deputy in trouble with the law. What he's accused of doing in his patrol car that has him being investigated by the sex crimes unit. A newborn baby found dead. The disturbing allegations against the mother and why she may have been trying to hide her pregnancy. Drug bust from the sky. Only San Diego 6 takes you on a surprise raid at a local marijuana farm. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Jim Pat. And I'm Heather Myers. Tonight, we now know what caused that fast-moving wildfire near Lakeside. Cal Fire says a weed cutter sparked flames that forced the evacuation of almost a dozen homes. The fire has burned about 225 acres. It started around 2.30 this afternoon off El Monte Road in Hazy Meadow Lane. Firefighters are still there. San Diego 6 reporter Eric Collins has a live update on when crews will have this fire out. Crews hope to have this fire fully contained by midnight. Right now, firefighters have a skeleton crew, just two engines out here tonight, making sure those flames don't flare up. Earlier tonight, we spoke with some homeowners who are relieved the threat is gone. This is never fun. This is not the way Aaron Zimmerman wants to spend his Friday afternoon, but with a fire racing toward his home, he races against the clock to cover every window with these fire-resistant boards. If it gets too hot, they don't, the, the windows can't be blown in as easily. This home is less than five years old. The previous house was destroyed in the 2003 Cedar Fire. Aaron says he's now accustomed to getting that dreaded call to evacuate. It's just the nature of living out here, and it's the nature of, of nature. These peacocks are Ingrid Coffin and Sheila Leeming's first sign. Something is wrong at the ranch. Like a good guard dog, they make plenty of noise when firefighters arrive and warn them to pack up. It's much easier to get dogs and cats out than peacocks. Like past evacuations, the birds have to stay behind as the women pack up their cats, computer, and other beloved belongings. Helicopters and air tankers keep the flames from covering the hill near their home. Luckily, the aircraft were in place and they were able to hold it on the ridge line and hold it in check until we could get ground troops into the area. Crews battling steep terrain and erratic winds that push the flames through bone dry grass. Firefighters gladly choose this scenario over the thick brush that once covered this area. The grass burns faster, but it's easier to suppress. The brush burns slower, but it's much hotter and harder to suppress. Firefighters quickly gain the upper hand, and Ingrid soon learns her home is safe and sound. He said we've been released, so it's under control. When you hear that, what do you think? <laughs> good, good. Aren't they great? The birds are happy, too. Like cats, those peacocks have nine lives. I'm told they have survived several wildfires out here. Now, tomorrow, we expect to see four engines out here and four hand crews. That's about 100 firefighters who will be out here and mopping this thing up. Reporting live from Lakeside, Eric Collins, San Diego 6 News. A lot of people breathing a sigh of relief. Eric, thank you so much. One person is dead and another seriously hurt following a crash on Interstate 5 this afternoon. It happened just after 1 in the northbound lanes near 5th Avenue. Witnesses say it appears the two cars were trying to change lanes when they lost control and smashed into each other. One of the parties in one of the vehicles was ejected and at this point he is deceased. Unsure of whether restraints were used at the time and uh, we're still looking into that. It's awfully early in the collision. Several lanes were shut down while officers investigated the accident. All of the lanes are now back open. A San Diego County Sheriff's detective is in hot water tonight. He's accused of forcing a prostitute into his undercover car and sexually assaulting her. After a six-month investigation, police finally arrested the deputy. San Diego 6 reporter Antonio Castellan has the story. I couldn't believe it when I first heard it. People living in the Santee community can't believe their neighbor, 47-year-old Tom Sadler, a sheriff's deputy ended up behind bars. I would be surprised if, if any of this is true. But police are saying the deputy stationed out of Lemon Grove broke the law. They claim he flashed his badge and pistol 
to a prostitute. The victim says it all began here on this bus bench on El Cajon Boulevard. She goes on to say Sadler ordered her to get into his car. The car ride ended at this Mission Valley parking lot. Inside the car, police say Sadler touched and groped the woman. It's very disturbing to all law enforcement. Number one, that a law enforcement officer would be involved in this type of activity. Detectives say the woman fought back. Witnesses saw this happening and thought a domestic fight was going on. They called 911 and approached the undercover car. The woman in her 20s escaped and Sadler sped off. The victim took down a partial license plate number. Police say he abused his power again. After the incident, uh, he apparently went back to the sheriff's substation and ran the computer for his license plate number and the address where the incident occurred. The sheriff's department has put Sadler on unpaid leave. It damages, you know, the thousands of men and women uh, in law enforcement that go to work every day and, and do their best to earn the public's trust. Now Sadler could get six years in jail if he's convicted. Reporting downtown, Antonio Castellan, San Diego 6 News. And this isn't the first time Sadler has been in trouble. Court records show in 2003, a woman claimed Sadler sexually harassed her on a traffic stop. In this latest case, he has posted a $250,000 bond. The 20-year veteran of the Sheriff's Department faces sexual battery and assault charges. A Mexican federal police commander whose top deputies were gunned down last weekend has been arrested for possession of a half million dollars from drug trafficking. Los Angeles County prosecutors say that Carlos Cepano Filippini is one of four people charged with felony possession of drug money. Filippini was the top agent in Mexicali where last Saturday night two of his deputies were shot to death. No arrests have been made in those killings. The Border Patrol is investigating how an illegal immigrant died in custody at its checkpoint station in San Clemente. A spokesman says the Mexican man was combative when taken into custody July 8th. Agents used pepper spray and took him into the checkpoint station on Interstate 5, where he died. The cause of death has not been determined. The victim is 36-year-old Tomas Sanchez Orzuna. His sister says he crossed the border illegally three years ago and was a busboy in San Clemente. A mother pleaded not guilty to killing her newborn in Rancho Penasquitos. Prosecutors revealed disturbing details of the crime in court, as we hear from San Diego 6 reporter John Mattis. A horrific allegation lodged against Julie Reynolds. Essentially, she smothered the newborn baby boy with her hand over the baby boy's nose and mouth. Her own baby. The state says she lived in Rancho Penasquitas with her sister, where she had a baby, despite denying it to her family. From one day to the next, the defendant's size shrunk. Brother-in-law found blood uh, on the carpet. Police were contacted. A search of the defendant's bedroom closet revealed a black backpack. And yes, inside that black backpack, Your Honor, was the body of a newborn baby boy. Today charged with one is assault on a child under the age of eight, resulting in death, and the other is murder. She faces a maximum of life in a state prison. In court, her public defender entered a plea for her. She's going to enter a not guilty plea. Outside of court, Deputy District Attorney Tracy Pryor said, Reynolds has a history of child abuse. Endangerment and neglect issues in two separate states. She has six children from three separate men. This would have been her seventh. Sadly, this kind of case is not uncommon in California. In 2006, 140 children were killed by their parents in California, 44% under the age of one. We never truly know why somebody would do what they do. John Mattis, San Diego 6 News. A local cardiologist is arrested for prescription fraud. Dr. Michael Hill is accused of ordering Vicodin prescriptions from pharmacies in Encinitas using variations of his and his wife's names. DEA agents say he would then sign pharmacy logs as the patient or spouse of the patient. They say Hill prescribed and bought more than 1,000 Vicodin tablets every month from February through July. Hill is accused of obtaining a prescription by fraud. Crime Stoppers need your help in finding a fugitive. 50-year-old Frank Anthony Cleaver is wanted on two felony no-bail warrants for drug possession. He's 5'6 and weighs about 160 pounds. Police are offering a $1,000 reward for information leading to Cleaver's arrest. If you have any information on his whereabouts, please call 888-580-TIPS. You can remain anonymous. 
Escondido police are warning residents about a suspect who's pretending to work for the water department and demanding money from homeowners. Police say a woman was targeted last Thursday by a man in a uniform. He reportedly threatened to turn off the woman's water if she did not give him $50. The woman had been behind on her bill, so she gave the man the cash, but her water was still shut off a few days later. Police investigated workers at the water department, but no one matched the suspect's description. He's described as Latino in his mid-20s, 5 feet 9 inches tall, and weighs about 220 pounds. Things are heating up, but will the warm weather hang out through the weekend? Meteorologist Aloha Taylor tracking our forecast tonight. Good evening, Aloha. Hey there, Jim. Yes, it has been warm, it's been sunny, and we've been talking a lot about monsoonal moisture. That is still expected to move in as we head into the weekend. And as we take a look at the satellite and radar imagery, you can see all of these clouds here to the south. That's a part of that monsoonal moisture that is expected to make it our way. What's it going to do for us? Well, we've been talking humidity. So that is expected to climb more so on Sunday versus Saturday. But will we see any rain out of this as it moves in? I'm going to cover that coming up here a little later in weather. So stay tuned. I'll see you then. Okay, Aloha, thanks. More than $145 million in marijuana is confiscated this week by a raid by DEA agents on two marijuana farms near Paula. It's one of the largest busts so far this summer. The gardens were spotted from the sheriff's helicopter. Then over the last few days, agents hiked into the area and cut down over 36 thousand plants. This is not a garden. This is not your backyard. Three yard, three plants hidden behind your pine tree in the southwest corner of your house. No, it's not. This is labor intensive. This is a whole group of people coming out here and uh, spending a summer attempting to make a lot of money uh, off our land. Later on San Diego 6 News, an exclusive tour of these gardens, who agents think is growing the plants and what the pot farmers are doing to protect their investments. Looking forward to that story. Mm -hmm. Looks interesting. An NFL superstar caught up in a San Diego lawsuit, the player in the spotlight and the big money gifts he is accused of taking. Next, beefing up store security. Armed robberies are on the rise. What San Diegans are doing to protect themselves. I'm Elsa Seville. I'll have a live report coming up. One San Diego neighborhood, be on the lookout for a robber on the loose, the type of business he's targeting. Budget backlash, the Californians getting hurt by the governor's drastic cuts and the public services being cut. Well, more than driving under the influence, he should have died. The breathalyzer test you won't believe. Ode to the Subway $5 foot long for a meal... San Diego 6 News at 10. Your station for balanced news. The number of armed robberies at local banks and restaurants is on the rise. Now many businesses are going to great lengths to screen their customers and avoid being a target. Reporter Elsa Sevilla is live with how San Diegans are fighting back. Elsa? Heather, local businesses are going to extreme measures, if you will. Some banks have installed... Um, bulletproof glass, metal detectors, and security guards at some of their branches. Terrifying moments for a customer and two employees at this Submarina restaurant in Vista as an armed robber forces the employees to open up the cash register. The suspect jumps over the counter and heads to the safe in the back, then ties up the victims. There have been a number of armed robberies in recent weeks. Because of it, local businesses are taking precautionary measures like this bulletproof window. Open the door, open the door. And he said, I can open it. Why? I want the money. So no, I don't have money. Yeah, you have a lot of money. No. Hey. Reina Trejo explains what happened during a recent holdup at this Crini Mesa gas station. She's been working as a clerk for the past four years and assaulted at gunpoint twice. So do you feel safer with the sí. proof? Despite the two robberies, Trejo says she feels safe, but mentions customers aren't always patient with the process of showing extra identification or passing their cash through a glass drawer. In North Park, a safety measure is taken to a whole new level. Customers have to wait in line to go inside this union bank, go through bulletproof doors and a body scanner that detects weapons, similar to those at the airport. It's more as a deterrent to keep them out because of the fact that don't, if you do, you get locked in. Only one person at a time can go in or out of the bank. And if there were a robbery in progress, the would-be robbers and bank customers could be locked inside together until police arrived. It really doesn't bother me. I mean, it's a little time consuming, but as far as safety, I'm comfortable with it. 
The four suspects in the Kearney Mesa gas station robbery were arrested. The clerk was not heard. Meantime, Vista police are still looking for the suspect in the Submarina restaurant robbery. Live in Kearney Mesa, Elsa Sevilla, San Diego 6 News. Elsa, thank you so much. And police are looking for a burglar who hit three car rental companies in the Midtown area. The suspect targets businesses during early morning hours. During the last incident on Tuesday, he took a 2005 Blue Dodge Caravan, which still has not been found. The suspect is a white man between the ages of 25 and 40, clean shaven. Police are offering a $1,000 reward for information leading to his arrest. If you know anything about these cases, please call Crime Stoppers, 888-580-TIPS, and you can remain anonymous. The parents of a dancer who was shot and killed by Harbor Police have filed two claims asking for $20 million from the department. Stephen Hirschfield was killed after he jumped off a charter boat into San Diego Bay two weeks ago. He had been part of a gay pride celebration. Harbor Police say when they pulled him from the water, Hirschfield grabbed for an officer's gun, and that's when they fired. But the family says police shot him in the back and say Hirschfield was shot because he is gay. A legal claim is the first step toward filing a lawsuit. A civil suit against Reggie Bush is going to court while lawyers are saying that he's trying to hide gifts he's received. The suit is by Lloyd Lake, a San Diego friend of Bush who claims he gave the star running back and his family $291,000 in cash and housing between 2004 and 2006. Lake says he gave the money as part of a verbal agreement that Bush would be involved in a new sports agency Lake was starting. The deal apparently fell apart and now Lake wants his money back. Lawyers for Bush were hoping to settle this case in confidential arbitration. Bush denies any wrongdoing. Walmart says it is not pressuring its employees to vote Republican in the November election. The Wall, Street, the Wall Street Journal reported that Walmart held mandatory meetings with store managers, warning that if Democrats win in November, they'd probably pass a bill that would make it easier for workers to unionize. A Walmart spokesman says the company did discuss the bill with its employees. However, Walmart says it is not asking employees to vote against supporters of this measure. California's largest employees union is filing a lawsuit to stop the governor from laying off workers and cutting pay for thousands of others. Governor Schwarzenegger signed an executive order yesterday hoping to force lawmakers to agree on a budget. As Lisa Amin reports, some state offices are closing early and cutting services as a result. What happened? Um, the budget wasn't signed, so we were told to close at 3 today. Dozens were turned away with no warning and only this notice as explanation. Starting today, only those with appointments are allowed in the DMV after 3 p.m. It's a cost-saving move to eliminate overtime. The once-a-month Saturday hours are also being cut. The change affects all branches in Alameda, Monterey, Ventura, and Los Angeles counties. The San Jose DMV on Alma Avenue is also impacted. We had to turn a lot of people away because we can't, we can't serve them because we have to be out at five. We cannot get no overtime. So now we have customers yelling at us thinking it's our fault. One hour after the governor signed the executive order allowing pay cuts and pink slips, this sign went up and Cassandra Sesedo's hours as a part-time license and ID tech got cut in half. It's very stressful to, to go, have to go home and be happy about having my job still but not being able to help my daughter plan or pay for her wedding. Better full-time co-workers are expected to receive their entire salaries. State controller John Chung refuses to follow the governor's orders. I will not do so for a whole host of reasons. Number one, I think it subjects the California to unnecessary legal liability. Chung has no control over staff schedules or office hours. Many DMV customers wish he did. It expires on the last day of the month, which is today. Oscar Granados needs another temporary permit while his car's registration is being processed. Come tomorrow, it'll be considered illegal to drive without it. An amphibious naval ship deploys for a mission in the Panama Canal. The USS Tarawa is taking part in exercises along with about 20 other nations from the Caribbean and Central America. This will be the ship's last mission before it retires from the fleet next year. He was linked to the 2001 fatal anthrax attacks. A former government scientist was found dead. What may have been the cause? It became law a month ago going hands-free on your cell phone while driving. I'm Brooke Berry. Were San Diegans able to hang up and drive? Please say your cell phone grace period is over.
One person is dead after a car crashes into some palm trees. How fast witnesses say the driver was going. San Diego's tourism industry has taken a hit due to the weakening economy and gas prices. The mayor's plan to give you a staycation. We got a whole new look at San Diego 6, but we're not going anywhere. Same old faces. Who are you calling old? Hmm, I don't know. Guess. Not that old. Okay, Grandpa. Oh, ow. <laughs> new look, new name, same great team. San Diego 6 in the morning. What are you? If you haven't already hung up your cell phone while driving, now is the time. After a month-long grace period, tonight all local law enforcement agencies are writing tickets. Brooke Berry is live in the newsroom with the details on what's happening in San Diego. Brooke. Jim, even though the law went into effect on July 1st, several local agencies have allowed drivers to get used to the idea of talking hands-free. Now they want you to get used to something else, paying for a ticket if you get caught. A traffic stop on an individual that was uh, seen using cell phone while they're driving. It's gonna be the 1900 block of Highland. Do you know why the reason I'm pulling you over? It's the first day of hands-free cell phone enforcement in National City, and Sergeant Graham Young makes his first traffic stop. Do you have a cell phone in the car? Yeah, yeah. yeah, we're using the cell phone maybe just a couple uh, minutes ago. Yeah. The California law went into effect a month ago, but National City, like the city of San Diego, gave drivers some time to get used to the idea. However, with any new law or rule, um, you're going to have some folks who just don't follow the rules. And we figured one month is enough, and after one month, for those who don't follow the rules, that's what the ticket book's for. California Highway Patrol's San Diego office has written 214 tickets over the last 31 days, but like National City, police say so far... People have been pretty compliant. I think we need to get used to it because it's dangerous <laughs> to sit there talking. I mean, you're distracted whether you have the hands free or not. I think it's made a difference. I think people are more conscious, more aware of what they're doing. And those who aren't... I was just talking on the phone and I totally forgot the law that... You can't be on your phone no more, so. Fortunately, it's this woman's lucky day. She'll be Sergeant Young's last warning. Our goal is not necessarily to see how many tickets we can write. Bottom line is that this uh, new cell phone law is about saving lives. Most of the agencies I spoke with say they have seen a real increase in the number of people that are talking hands-free. And most of those people who are getting caught are making mistakes on the road that prove that they are driving and distracted. Live in the newsroom, Brooke Berry, San Diego 6 News. Brooke, thanks. One person is dead after a car crashes into trees in Allied Gardens. Will happen this afternoon in the 7,000 block of Mission Gorge Road. Police say the Lincoln sedan was speeding when it veered off the road and crashed into palm trees. The passenger, a man in his 20s, died at the scene. The driver was taken to the hospital with severe injuries. Witnesses say he was driving between 80 and 100 miles per hour. Authorities say a man arrested in Rhode Island had the highest blood alcohol level they have ever seen. Stanley Kobarowski was arrested on suspicion of driving under the influence, and police say he had a blood alcohol level of .491. That's more than six times the legal limit. In court today, Kobarowski pleaded not guilty to drunk driving. His attorney is questioning the accuracy of the breathalyzer test he was given. Authorities say Kobarowski might hold the state record for having the highest blood alcohol concentration without dying. I'm not sure that's any record anybody, anybody wants to set. Anybody wants to have, right. Mm. Congress has left for a five-week recess without passing an energy bill. What politicians on both sides of the fence are saying about this decision. And next, millions of dollars worth of marijuana is confiscated by federal agents. An exclusive look at the pot farm and the raid led by the DEA. He was just about to be charged by the U.S. Justice Department. Now a former government scientist is found dead. A patriotic SUV is raffled off by the San Diego Blood Bank, the real American hero that won this vehicle. San Diego 6 News at 10 with Jim Patton and Heather Myers. Your station for balanced news. And welcome back. I'm Jim Patton. And I'm Heather Myers. As border security gets tighter, drug traffickers are increasingly looking to home grow their biggest cash crop. Since April, special agents have raided nearly 70 pot gardens in San Diego County. San Diego 6 reporter Brooke Berry went along for an exclusive look at the operation that's netted hundreds of millions of dollars in marijuana so far this summer. 
We're gonna go up there and clear the garden, and we'll be back in a little bit. Sometimes it's up to a couple miles of a hike. This one happens to be real close, so it's ideal. I'm guessing there's at least 5,000 in here. Field elevation is set. flying somewhere and we see marijuana, we pick it. We average about 250,000 marijuana plants a summer during the marijuana eradication program. The goal is to find the growers. Well, I mean, if you arrest them and you get some type of conviction, you put them in jail, it shows that we're out there looking for them and we're just not gonna turn our back on uh, them growing marijuana. What we've got here is a, a basic hooch that the uh, growers will use. They'll stay overnight up here, they'll cook, they'll clean, they'll wash up. A bust like this one in the mountains near Paula has cost the drug trafficking organization $20 million in lost revenue, an investment they will go to serious lengths to protect. We found the marijuana processing area just down the hillside from the actual campsite. We probably interrupted what the growers were doing this morning because we found a large baggie of dried marijuana just waiting to make its way down the hill. But something even more disturbing and a little unexpected was an empty gun holster. It's possible that the growers have the gun and are still up the hill right now. Agents from the DEA, Department of the Interior, Sheriff's Department, and National Guard keep an eye out and collect the evidence. Over 36,000 marijuana plants. I anticipated 10 of us being able to carry these out, but that's not going to happen. Yeah, we'll probably sling it off this rock here. Detective Steve Breed is already thinking about the next bust. In San Diego County, there are no shortage of places to look. Near Paula, Brooke Berry. San Diego 6 News. Well, for now, San Diego County must continue to issue ID cards to medical marijuana patients. Yesterday, a state appeals court judge ruled that San Diego and San Bernardino counties have no legal authority to drop the ID card program. Both counties argued that handing out these ID cards goes against the federal drug laws. But the judge disagreed, saying federal laws are aimed at recreational drug use, not medical use. The county plans to appeal yesterday's decision. A government scientist linked to the deadly anthrax attacks in 2001 has killed himself just before the Justice Department was planning to file charges against him. Bruce Ivins worked at a government biodefense lab in Maryland. According to a colleague, he took an overdose of prescription painkillers. Five people died when letters containing anthrax were sent out to lawmakers and news organizations. Government sources say tests on the substance found that it originated at the biodefense lab where Ivins worked. U.S. lawmakers are off for the summer on summer vacation, leaving the Capitol for five weeks without passing an energy bill that could bring some relief for Americans paying high prices at the gas pump. As Brianna Keeler reports, today's move has outraged politicians on both sides of the aisle. Cars parked outside the Capitol building, standing ready to whisk members of Congress off to the airport. On the House floor, Republicans heckled a vote to adjourn for a five-week break. They insisted Democrats stay until they pass an energy bill that includes opening up protected areas for offshore oil drilling. We're demanding that we not have a recess. In just a few minutes, those steps are going to be covered up with members of Congress making the ultimate race to the airport when they should be staying here. But Democrats say Republican energy proposals are misguided, that more offshore drilling won't bring gas prices down and would be a gift to oil companies that should drill in areas they've already leased. And so the summer exodus began without any compromise, except for one bipartisan moment, an agreement to stop stockpiling oil in the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. Republicans and Democrats have spent weeks debating renewable energy, conservation, speculation in oil markets, and a slew of other proposals with nothing to show for it except partisan sniping. The blame game continued as Congress left town. We have had 12 years of Republicans whose idea of, of an energy policy is doing hardly anything about developing other sources of energy, hardly anything about developing uh, energy efficient technologies, and giving subsidies and tax breaks to an oil and gas industry that is already making obscene profits. The Democrat leaders in this Congress have been thumbing their nose 
at the American people now for nine weeks. And, uh, and here we're going home for five weeks, uh, and, uh, and it, I think that's a giant insult uh, to the American people uh, that, uh, that we would leave here without uh, having uh, a vote on this issue. And that was Brianna Keeler reporting. An SUV gets a patriotic makeover, taking on the theme of Captain America from Marvel Comics. This Honda Element was wrapped by a local dealer and put on display at Comic-Con last weekend. Today, the San Diego Blood Bank hosted a raffle for blood donors to win the SUV. Ironically, a real American hero, Sergeant Major Jamie Winters, won the Captain America SUV. The local Marine is a huge fan of the comic character, and he and his wife were donating blood when he found out he won. I appreciate Marvel decorating and the blood bank just, you know, for sponsoring the raffle to begin with. Um, Stan Lee signed it, and um, as soon as I saw it, I was in love with it, so it's a keeper, definitely. The San Diego blood bank also got a prize today. The County Board of Supervisors awarded them a $10,000 grant to refurbish their 24-year-old blood mobile that will allow it to remain in service for another 10 years. How perfect is that that he won? I know, and don't cut him off on the freeway. You'll have Captain America after You'll have you. Captain America after Very scary. Coming up next, planning a low-budget vacation in America's finest city. Tired after a long day at the office, Mayor Sanders wants you to loosen your tie and staycation here at home. I'm Alex Michelson. Coming up, we'll show you the new deals that the city unveiled today. A California man accused of widespread animal abuse. The bizarre remains investigators found on his property that led to his arrest. Making one of television's edgiest shows suitable for prime time. It's all the work of a Poway woman. Her secrets for telling the story without crossing the line. With the weak economy and high gas prices, fewer out-of-towners can afford to visit America's finest city. San Diego 6 reporter Alex Michelson shows us a new campaign that wants you to make up the difference, offering deals to go on a staycation. We call it our condo on wheels. East Lake resident Judy Scott has parked her motor home on the East Coast for the last time for a while. Gas prices are just too high. It's somewhere around $520 to fill it up. And we get nine miles to a gallon. Instead, she's coming to the Strand in Coronado much more often. She's part of a growing trend taking staycations. Put the kids on here. Vacations at home. San Diego's hotel tourism is down 7% in the last month. Today, Mayor Sanders unveiled two new websites packed with deals to keep people closer to home. We forget what we have in San Diego. People can experience it with some special deals. The mayor's campaign is themed happiness. Part of it is to get Los Angeles residents to travel what they're calling the road to happiness and come here to San Diego. And part of it is to get our own residents to stay happy and staycation. And judging by the views here at Pacific Beach, who wouldn't be happy? Temecula's Kelly Noon and her daughter Adeline canceled their trip to Hawaii and are now frequenting San Diego's beaches. It's nice to go home and be relaxed instead of be stressed about getting on a plane. At least Adeline doesn't seem to mind staycationing. In Pacific Beach, Alex Michelson, San Diego 6 News. That was a tough day for Alex today. And to take a look at the specific deals being offered, visit our website, sandiego6.com, and click on the link, Hot Topics. It's remarkable how he spotted those views. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you like late night TV here at San on San Diego 6, then we know that you like the show South Park, and you know it is one of the edgiest programs on television. In fact, it presented a bit of a challenge a few years ago when the series became syndicated and made the move to broadcast television. But never fear, Poway's own Cindy Tolan is here. Cindy has her own business called Syndication, where she edits a broad range of shows, including South Park, for television. It's the art of removing what crosses the line while keeping the storyline and humor intact. Every show has a life of its own and a team of its own and particular goals of whatever we're trying to do to... Above all, trying to keep our sense of humor and keep people laughing, because most of the shows I work on are intended to be funny. Cindy says the best compliment is when viewers watch a show she's worked on and can't tell that anything has been done. Starting this Monday, you can try your hand at spotting Cindy's work at 5 p.m. as South Park is moving to a new time here on San Diego 6. She, we were talking on the phone tonight, and she was telling me that some of the tricks, you know, some words are only bad as contractions when they're together.
but mm. not bad when they're apart. Use your imagination. Use <laughs> your adult experience. We're need to think and about so it. there's, you know, and she is, a, she's a mother of two mm -hmm. there in Poway, so she has, she's a professional and she has the perspective of a family woman. So it's yeah. a delicate science. Yeah, that really changes your view of everything when you have children. Right. You know, having that two year at home, two year old, watching commercials for me sometimes mm -hmm. is violent. Yeah. So we have edited everything. No TV for mommy ever again, right. just the newscast. Barney's offensive at this point now. Hang on. No, he's good. Okay. We love him. Everybody loves Barney. Hey, uh, we have a weekend here. You've made it to Friday. Congratulations. And uh, we do have a few changes as we head into the weekend. I think you know what they are if you've been watching us religiously like you should be. There's a look outside. Currently downtown San Diego coming in at 67 degrees and winds are blowing a three-year humidity at 79. They were nursed back to health after being found sick and hurt where some California brown pelicans are being sent after a stay at SeaWorld. This song. After several days on the run, a California man accused of abusing dozens of animals is behind bars. Reporter Karina Rusk spoke with a suspect about the bizarre charges he's now facing. Los Gatos police found Robert Brunette this morning on the campus of Los Gatos High School. Brunette calmly answered some of our questions before he was transported to the Santa Cruz County Jail. Do you think that you were treating those animals okay? Animal Services and the district attorney think otherwise. After taking 40 dogs off of Brunette's Boulder Creek property, he faces eight felony and five misdemeanor counts of animal abuse and neglect. These, um, uh, we believe, warranted the, the felonies based on the conditions that they were kept in, based on the conditions of the animals, their, their, their body condition. This is Brunette's booking photo. He said he ran from authorities because he had problems a few years ago and, in his words, didn't want to get beat up again. As for the evidence of dead animals on his property, Brunette said they were poisoned by neighbors and offered an explanation for preserving that evidence. The skull. Animal services workers said they found that statement interesting, but are most confused about Brunette's behavior when he seemed to taunt investigators during his five days on the run. I think the most disturbing thing about this case was the, the skull and the paws that were placed on the table after we had left on the first search warrant and came back on the second. That's the most disturbing part about this case is why that was done. That was Karina Rusk reporting. Meanwhile, 10 brown California pelicans are back in the wild after being nursed back to health by SeaWorld. The birds were released one by one today into Mission Bay. The pelicans were brought to SeaWorld after they were found injured and severely underweight. Many times the birds have fishing line or hooks wrapped around their wings or in their pouches. So far this year, SeaWorld has received 70 brown pelicans in need of medical care. Most of these birds don't survive when they're this thin. I mean, they are emaciated. Imagine a bird that's half its normal weight, and that's what we see here. Fortunately, our keepers, our, uh, our aviculturists are able to take these birds in that condition and turn many of them around. And the California brown pelican has recently been taken off the endangered species list. Enjoying your Friday night as we head into tomorrow. Some morning clouds. It's going to be warm and sunny once again. And that humidity on the rise as we head into the weekend. Sunday should be the more humid day of the weekend. And as we head into the beginning of next week, that humidity is going to continue as well. August climatology is the first of the month. It's actually the warmest month of the year. Downtown Lindbergh Field. Normal high about 77.8 degrees. Rain is not common during August. 60% of all the August since 1850, no measurable rainfall. Monthly rainfall average, a tenth of an inch, and it's the sixth sunniest month of the year. Clouds usually clearing by mid-morning, and that's pretty much what we've been seeing over the last couple of days. Highs look like this. We were at 78 in Oceanside, Solana Beach. You were at 74 today, as well as Chula Vista, Poway at 89, 91 in San Pasqual, 92 in Rona, 89 for Julian, and Otay Mesa, you came in at 80 degrees today. So, Pretty nice out, can't complain. Uh, downtown, you're 
75, actually two degrees cooler than normal for this time of the year. And Ramona, you were a degree warmer than normal at 92. You should be at 91 this time of the year. So high pressure still in control. This has been the story and the scenario all week long. It has strengthened a bit. And as we head into the weekend, a flow around this is going to shift more out of the south, and that'll bring some of that monsoonal moisture our way, all the cloud cover that you saw to the south and the southeast here. So that'll be moving in, increasing our humidity, and also giving the mountains and the deserts a chance for afternoon thunderstorms, but more so as we head into Sunday and into Monday of next week. Taking a look at our future forecast, look at the uh, bottom here or to the south of San Diego County. You can see some of the moisture 5 o'clock Saturday, still pretty far south. Then on Sunday, it creeps a little closer, that humidity showing signs of kicking up. And then on Monday, it actually starts to move into the region here. So that's a sign of things getting better as far as juicy atmosphere and air. 65 for your start, cloudy start, 74 by the afternoon and seeing plenty of sunshine as you head inland temperatures starting in the low 60s, getting well into the 80s by the afternoon. Mountain temperatures are going to be warm as well. And with the daytime heating and extra moisture in the air, we'll probably see some clouds start to bubble up. Deserts getting up into the triple digits again and surf two to three feet, a mixed swell. And there's your six-day forecast along the coastline. No big temperature changes. You'll just feel that humidity start to move in, inland areas. Temperatures actually dropping as we head into the next couple of days uh, as high pressure starts to weaken a bit. And as that humidity moves in, actually, the more moisture in the atmosphere, the tougher and slower it is to heat up and to cool down. And that's why in the deserts there on Monday, you see 99. And that's because of that extra humidity. It's harder and it takes longer to heat up and cool down. Alrighty. Did you by chance say something about the juiciness of the atmosphere? That's right. <laughs> you like that? I thought we were going to have to get Cindy Tolan to come in and edit your weather forecast. Oh, where is your mind tonight, Jim? Yeah. It is Friday night, though. Mm. Aloha, thanks. Thank you. Speaking of Friday nights, Andrea Nakano's here, mm -hmm. and we're talking about the Padres who refuse to give up this season, which I do appreciate since they're having such a tough season. Maybe you appreciate it. How many fans really appreciate <laughs> it? No, we all the appreciate lining. their hard effort. We do, we do. The Padres open up a three-game series against the Giants tonight. They have to try to get by a Cy Young candidate for a win. Plus, behind veteran Chris Chambers, the both receivers are young, but they're looking impressive at camp. More on the Chargers and what fans need to know about tomorrow. Coming up in sports. Closed. Seven minutes of nonstop news. 11 at 11. Starting Monday. Rapper Snoop Dogg in trouble with the law once again, but this time it wasn't him being arrested. Police pulled over the singer's tour bus last night in Texas for expired tags, but inside, authorities say they found marijuana and arrested two men on the bus. Snoop Dogg was reportedly taking a nap when this all happened. His attorney says the police were wrong to pull them over because there was nothing wrong with the bus tags in the first place. Hmm. Snoop hmm. taking a nap, huh? Is that one of those, <laughs> hurry up, pretend you're asleep. <laughs> <Yeah>. Cops are here. <laughs> busy from all that rapping. Hmm. The Padres taking another nap again today. It keeps happening yes. this season. All these naps are going around. Well, you know, I don't know if they're taking a nap or a big break or what's going on here, but... Yeah. Yeah, Khalil, <laughs> well, Khalil, Khalil Green's frustration with the season erupted this week. He fractured the bone in his hand that attaches to the pinky finger. Apparently, he got a little violent after suffering his 100th strikeout of the year. He was officially put on the 15-day disabled list today, but he's expected to miss six to eight weeks, possibly the rest of the season. Meanwhile, Tadahito Iguchi came off the DL. The San Diego Chicken making a special appearance at the pet shop tonight with the chicks tagging along. We pick up the game in the second and interesting play here with the bases loaded. Luis Rodriguez hits a ground ball to John Balker, and Balker really doesn't know where to go. Everyone's safe, including Kevin Kuzminoff, who reaches home plate. The game is tied at one. Then in the fourth, a costly mistake by the pods. Nick Hundley couldn't come up with this ball, and Fred Lewis scores. Giants go up two to one. But as soon as the Padres get into the Giants' bullpen, they see some light. Adrian Gonzalez strikes. He goes yard off of Jack Tashner. The game is tied again, this time at two. So we're going into extra innings in this ball game. Top of the 10th, Eugenio Velez comes in to pinch hit, and he sends the ball all the way to the scoreboard. Emmanuel Burris comes home to represent the game-winning run, and the Giants win 3-2. And the Padres come up on the short end again of a great pitcher's duel. Thanks was uh, solid. You know, he matched... Uh... You know, stayed right there with Lincecum. You know, gave up, uh, you know, the one earned run. Uh, he and Nicky got crossed up on 
on the one ball that got by uh, went, got by him. But I thought he, you know, he threw the ball well. Uh, you know, here again we, you know, turned a key double play. Uh, you know, he made some pitches when uh, he needed to when they threatened a couple times. So threw the ball well. In January, Vincent Jackson stepped into the national spotlight as he showcased his abilities in the playoffs. This season, the Chargers hope to show off their offensive, offensive weapons from day one. Even if Antonio Gates isn't ready for the first game, Phillip Rivers has plenty of targets. Legadu Nene has been taking a lot of reps, filling in different slots in Gates' absence. And Vincent Jackson has had a strong start to camp this year. The veteran of the receiving four is looking forward to what they can accomplish this year. But uh, I like the young guys that we have. They're extremely talented. Uh, you know, they're just taking that next step. They're growing uh, as, as receivers. They're, they're learning a lot and they're absorbing. Uh, I think Jackson has a, a great opportunity to be a, a great receiver in this league for many years. Uh, Craig Davis and Nani is going to come along as well. So I believe our receiver core is really strong and uh, very complete right now. And Charger fans, get out your jerseys, hats, whatever Bolts gear you can find. Fan Fest kicks off at 10 in the morning at Qualcomm. And if you can't make it out to the queue tomorrow, there will be other autograph sessions coming up in the next week. And the X Games continue today. Chad Kagey wins gold in the BMX Big Air Finals. He had a clean, solid run, landing after both tricks to beat out Dave Muir. How do these guys do this? I, I, uh, then in the motocross step-up finals, Ricky Carmichael clears 33 feet, and he comes down on both wheels to win. He's hardly human. I, it's amazing. I, I don't know how they it's do It's fun it. to watch. Mm -hmm. Great sport. Good night. Good night. Thanks so much for joining us. Good night.